Hello and welcome. These are horse racing selections for Friday the 12th of May. I am Flat Cap Callum and I'm hoping you're all very, very well. All right. Thursday's happened and it was like deja vu from Wednesday. Seven horses, one didn't run, two placed and four were rubbish. And in between all that, there was some weird market moves. Both the place horses ended up in different bets. Very, very similar. We'll, we'll go into a more in-depth review. Uh, but uh, yeah, Friday, I'm pleased to say, is slightly more interesting than the last few days. Because of the last three channel days, we've had a £10 day. Friday, we have got a normal stake. We are full £20 stake on Friday. Five bets, two lucky 15s with different stake. Each way combination doubles. Each way Trixie and win Trixie. We've got a whole variety, five bets. Five past two at Chester is the first race. Most of the racing, to be fair, that I've got selections in is around tea time. So a £20 day for Friday, five past two, Chester. There are your main headlines coming up. Before we do that, let's go through the slightly more in-depth review, but it won't take very long. Um, Stately Home uh, ran with credit, came fifth, needed fourth in the end. Uh, it was very close. That was unfortunate. Give me a cuddle wasn't quite close enough. And Jamil ran a nice race to be third. Therefore, one third and one one out of the placings means nothing back for an each way Trixie. So zero return on bet one. Um, and then we had, if I can get to it, bet two. Again, we had some funny market moves in Ireland. Um, just all weird. So... Uh, New Ross came in in the betting and then was declared a non-runner. So we lost that one. Ducotto halved in odds and then went back again and didn't really run any sort of race, I don't think. 7.18, we had Ventnor. That one came in a little bit, but it was masked by the fact there was a 45p rule for deduction on it. It ran terrible race. Um, so I think it went off at like 13 to 2, 7 to 1. But it, that wasn't much shorter than what it was with 14 with the 45p rule for. The weird one, Emir de Rowe, 10 to 1 I had on the channel, which I was perfectly fine with. And then at some point, it went to 40 to 1. There was there was chuntering in the chat and people managed to get on at 40s. And then it came right back in and it SP'd at 20s. It ran a decent enough race. It finished really, really fast. Um, I think if they got it closer, that, that absolutely would have a chance of, of getting to the winner. But... Um, yeah, it was it was a bit too far back, but it, it absolutely stormed th through after the last hurdle. Um, but yeah, twenty to one was was the SP. So if you're on with SP, you done better. If you got the forties, well done. The channel only had it as ten with a non-runner, so one pound sixty back. So we had ten on one sixty back. Second day in a row, we've lost about eight quid, so we're down about sixteen quid for the week. Um, and I think we've now hit five five vids in a row where we, uh, we've we been loss making. So, yeah, it's not been the most exciting. We haven't been losing loads of, of cash because I've been staking loads of cash. We would like, please, Racing Gods, if you are listening, a little bit of a perk up for Friday, please. Um, we've got a few interesting things to go at. And I think we'd all appreciate a nice little win day. So if you could help us out, Racing, uh, racing Gods, that would be really, really helpful. Um... Yeah, it's not really the betting gods. The betting gods are doing all right. We're getting some prices, but um, racing gods, that's who we need on our side. Um, uh, yeah, don't think there's anything else I was going to say. I mean, oh, but yeah, I was going to actually mention, because it was interesting, there was, there was some commentary in the comment about this, about um, Burns, uh, the Irish trainer, getting done for a non-trier. Him and, uh, is it Gavin Bruder? Um so there, were, there was a 21-day ban and some fines going on for a horse that was backed in to uh, favouritism and then only finished fourth. <laughs> Which, a finishing fourth seems seems all right. When it was when our horse, it, it was me, in the same day, at the same meeting, went off at 4-1 to one after being 33-1. to one. Nobody nobody had a look there, did they? There's certain trainers that get flagged all the time of, of kind of being known to be playing a bit fast and loose with the system. Um, and uh, and clearly uh, some are a little bit more immune to it, I would say. Um, so that's all we'll say. We won't get too. We won't try not to be too too much trouble and stuff. You just have to accept, right? And some people can't. But there is a whole bunch of dodgy stuff goes on, right? We're not doing greyhounds. I mean, greyhounds. Gosh, my word! I wouldn't touch that. That is like just absolute corruption central. But horse racing. 
there are horses that try and there's horses that sometimes try and there's horses that rarely try and you just got to try and navigate that um it, it is more of a challenge in ireland uh, absolute grant and that's why you'll find a lot of people um who do tipping and stuff like that or put selection strategies out just avoid ireland because uh yeah they uh, they'd say it's uh, it's too corrupt I, I don't do bad at Ireland, as, as we've, we've talked about this channel before. There's certain times and certain places you hit these things because I'm using a different lens, if you like, when I'm looking at Ireland. I'm factoring in uh, betting plots and stuff. And, and I have certain horses, you know, in, 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 in my field of vision, in my, in my notebook, if you like, where I'm waiting for the right race. So waiting for the right race, waiting for the right price to try and catch it. So it's not all just exactly on the day what am i seeing there are certain horses that i'm waiting for the right circumstance before i'm i i, I kind of know it's there so um yeah there's a there's a few like that and sometimes they come and you know they five to one straight away and you can't do anything about it and you'll never know about it and other times you, they might appear in my selection plan um but more so at ireland i don't tend to yeah, just i just look at it differently um so let's get on with Friday's bet. Bet one, Chester Lucky 15. We've got a little bit more at Chester this week. It's Chester Cup Day. Now, Chester Cup Day, I've talked all week about how I like the Chester Cup. I don't like it in terms of this week from a betting point of view. Six places on Sky, five everywhere else. With the amount of runners we've got, 17 I think it is. That is, should be a decent betting heat, but I don't like the read of the form for value. I'm not looking at anything at a big price. Um thinking that it's solid enough for me to do the channel some of those might pop up even at the short end of the market it's not great so i've literally got the one horse in the chester cup i haven't gone big on it um and yeah that just i'm not forcing it so 205 chester fantastic fox 17 to 2 no extra places on that race then the 315 in chester cup my only horse i'm going on in m in um there was i was between two um to be honest and I just they weren't neither of them were, were brilliant prices, so I didn't want to do both. So I'm gone with Emin. Um, hopefully, I've gone the right way with that one. It's a Chester uh, horse through and through, so you know it's nice to have a horse that you know has got Chester form. Um, so we're having that one. Then the 420 Dahia, 18 to one. I think that's a horse that's got no Chester form. <laughs> uh, I can't. I think that's right. That, it's got. It's something missing. Definitely, I have Chester form, or it's never ridden on soft ground. Um, one of those two, but. My read of it is there's value in that price. And then the 455 Chester, which is technically the Chester Cup consolidation race, I really like that one. That I found a lot of value in. And unfortunately, not every book is paying five places in there. You've got Paddy and Betfred and Sky are currently. I'm guessing if there's at least one more non-runner, that will probably change. But currently Sky, Paddy and Betfred are paying five on the 455 Chester Cup consolidation. I like that better. So 17p each way, lucky 15, £5.10 is your bet. Four bet one, that is it. That's all at Chester and that includes the first three horses. So um, yeah, there's nothing else until 4.55. Then this is the trademark bets. That's what everybody's coming for, isn't it? That's the one. That's the, uh, the four wedgie prices shoved in together. So let me talk you through what I've put together here. 4.55 Chester, that's my best preferred race of the day. Um, I'll be punting more on that than anything else. I like some value. Um, I think you can go against some of the ones at the top of the market. Um, and yeah, I think there's value knocking about. So it's in the combination bet, 4.55 Chester. Whitehaven is the bigger price of the four that I've got in there in my combination bet. So I've stuck it in here. Um, I think it's got enough form that says... It absolutely has got the ability to get involved at the end, but it's a very, very competitive race. So we've got it in there as the bigger price of, of, of a few in that one. Then the rogue in this bet, 100% the rogue one, 508 Market Raisin, James Bay, 33 to 1. Now, let me give you a bit of a, an explanation on this one because otherwise it just looks weird, I think. Eight runners. Uh, in a bumper a market raisin that's that's what i'm telling you is I've, I've gone for the short price favorite i don't really see it getting beaten but then most of the horses haven't run james bay has run did run at market raisin didn't finish in terms of positional finishing very good but 
not not a million miles away, think it should come on for the run. And I'd rather take that one as the as the horse with the second best form in the race against the ones that are unraced. Um, the the other thing that makes this just a weird pick, I think, uh, in terms of somehow some people's logical work, and I'm sure people would be like, you know, really? Um, there's a horse in there, second favourite. It ran today, so I think that's going to come out. So I think it's going to go down, down to seven runners. So I'm back in this on the basis that I think the five to one second favourite is probably going to come out and there's going to be a rule four. Um, but I, I would make that horse third favourite of seven. So if you take out the, the, the horse that ran today at Huntingdon, I think there's one unraced horse on breeding that should be the second favourite, and that horse should be third favourite. So at 33 to one, paying three at the moment, probably paying two, I'm still happy to chance it. So um, even with a 5p rule four deduction, because it's not going to not gonna damage the price massively. And I'd be really surprised if that horse is not a lot shorter tomorrow. So that's that. And then I've got a pair at Kilbegan um, that I'm going to go on a little bit here. So 645 um, Macaloni. We've taken that a few times. Distinctly remember it winning at 25 to 1 last year at some point for us in one bet. Um, it's a pretty consistent horse. So in terms of when I've talked about horses, you know, corruption, horse racing or whatever, that is what you call a fairly honest horse. On the right conditions, it wants good ground. Now, I'm taking a, a taking a, a sort of a slight leap of faith here that the ground is drying at Kilbegan, the weather looks reasonable, so it's and it's good yielding ish kind of ground. I want it to dry up, dry up basically. Really, that's 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 the aim here. So we're going for drying ground for Macaloni. Um, I, I think it's an honest enough horse and top five on Sky for most other places. Um, it's definitely got a chance of getting in that frame. We'll see. And then the 755 has now become the second best race. Um, and I've gone in on the Echo Boy, which I think um, if you excuse last run, there wasn't really an obvious reason. But if you get past that, the actual form of it, because it does chuck in a few odd funny races, the form generally is pretty good. And again, you want drying ground. I think the distance is fine. So I've got, I've got a drying ground each way double going on here. So we've got 20p each way, lucky 15 on the four. And then we've got a 45p each way double on the two Kilbeggans, Macaloni and the Echo Boy. 690 is your bet. Sky are best, then Paddy and Bet Fred because they're also paying five on that one. And then 365 is next best. That is bet two. All right. Um, then we've got, oh yeah, combination double. So this won't be everyone's choice of combination double, but it's mine. 455 Chester. I've got Whitehaven has talked about 28. I've added in military two-step at 20s. Land of Winter already mentioned in the Chester Lucky 15 at 16. I've also added in the Predictor at 12. I think there's a lot to go out there at each way prices. And then we've got the, uh, the 755 at Kilbegan. I like Echo Boy independently of, of everything else. There's a few there at a price, and I've I've opted as my second choice the railway. Well, not the railway; it's just railway hurricane at fourteens. But four places, if that's what most people are getting, I absolutely would put these bets on with. Five is what you've got um, with Sky. I'm I'm really looking at that race, thinking the top five in the betting look beatable. Um, and yeah, I, I think the market's just not quite right on that. So I'm expecting quite a shift in the market that, yeah, that I can see what an argument for the top five in the betting. But as it stands at the time we're making this video, I, I wouldn't want to put any money on those top five. And therefore that's added to the fact that where further down the betting, I've found things I'm like that could spring up at a price. And I'm looking at the top of the market and thinking, I don't think that's solid. So it is. 8 times 25p each way doubles on those. So we've got quite a bit going on to the Echo Boy. So if that one flops at 40 to 1, biggest price of the day, so be it. But it's the one with the most value I've got. So it's worth worth putting a bit more stake on it. Conventional people will, will go, the shorter the odds, the more they'll put on because they think it's more likely to win. That is not how my mind works. The greater the value, the difference between... The price that it is, the price I think it should be, I'd back that 12 to 1. Then that is where I put more stake on. And that often means I'm putting more money on a bigger price horse. 
So off the channel, when I'm doing single bets and stuff, so I pretty much do single bets on anything kind of double figures upwards, I put more stake on the bigger price horses as a general rule. It come, it's about value, but as a general rule, the bigger the price, the more money I put on. It's not as it's way more complicated than that, but that is not what most people do. So that is bet three. Um, and then we've got each way tricksy. I put this in because there's a couple at Wolverhampton. I thought they were worth a little dabble. Didn't want to put a lot of money on. Um, so we've got the 530 Wolverhampton Labelle V. No extra places. It's just standard terms race. Nine to one. I just think it's a good price. I think it probably should be more like five or six to one. So reasonable enough in there to, to go down to. And then the 605 Wolverhampton. <laughs> I've looked in some places, it looked like that horse opened at 100 to 1, which I would have absolutely loved to have got on, but 28 is perfectly fine with. It's definitely a risky one, but it's got enough in its in its first run on on all weather surfaces to suggest that it's not it's not a 28 to 1 shot, but it's it's definitely a risky one. And then I've added in 755 kill beggar in the railway hurricane that's in the combination doubles. So we've got 25p each way tricks, each way doubles and trebles. So it's just a quick two pound bet. Sky Best then Coral 365 um, because they are four places on that. So Sky 5, Coral of 4 and you'll get and 365 and you'll get Bog. Those are both standard term races. So that is £2 a bet. And then we're going to finish off with a win Trixie. And you'll note I've got nothing at Ascot today. I didn't like Ascot. I've got 555 Ripon, uh, Harriet's Angel, uh, three runner race. Uh, my, uh, my, 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 Pop, so my dad's dad, who I never met, he died before I was born. He he was absolutely an avid gambler, and he he taught my dad. My dad taught me, and that's how it works in our family. But Pop's one of it. One of his great hand me downs was always always back the outsider in a three runner race. Now I'm not just backing this horse blindly um, in a three runner race. I think the the three horses are a lot more closely aligned than the betting would have you, and therefore the value of that is actually is 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 decent because. I don't think there's much between them. And in a three-runner race, it, it's all tactics. It's not about the best horse. It's not about the fastest horse. It's about tactically how does it work out. And there was a race earlier in the week, I think, three-runner race, two shorties, and there was a nine-to-one winner of it. It was the outside of the three. It happens all the time if you pay attention. Three-runner races, have a look at the outsider. <laughs> and that's the one you want to be on. So I'm not backing <laughs> an outsider blindly. I do think that there's there's reason for this one. Then we're going 620 Nottingham, Little Joe. Uh, one last time, I think I think it looks like it's on an upward curve. It's got better historical form than, than, than what it's been doing recently. So it's it's got potential to move back up in the rating. So we're going to go that one in. And then the 840 Nottingham, um, Shark 2-1. I think it's the only horse that, that definitely looks like it, it's going to like the, the, the rubbish ground at Nottingham. Um, it, it looks like it's not going to be a lot of fun to run on Nottingham. It might dry out a little bit between kind of now and and then, um, but not enough to to make it you know good ground. So I think on the ground, I think looking at all the horses, that's the one that seems to suggest that it's the most likely to like the ground. So I think it's a really good price, thirteen to two. So Shark two one thirteen to two fifty p win Trixie, two pounds you bet. You want a bog bookie that pays on multiples. So like three six five Coral or Paddy or Labricks. All right. Um, that sorry, well, <laughs> hopefully that was useful because I just feel this is nearly twenty minutes. I I know I waffled on and explained quite a bit of stuff there, but hopefully it was useful, insightful stuff, and it's you know fulfilled your life uh, whenever you've watched this. Um, uh, and but equally, I know some people don't like the waffle, but if you don't like the waffle, <laughs> you don't have to watch my channel. Do you know what I mean? Um, so uh, yeah, um, it's yeah, I do what I do. Uh, so. Uh, that's me. I'll be back Saturday morning with freebets.com about half eight, and then uh, it'll be later on as usual for the for my regular video about half ten ish. Uh, what have we got Saturday? I think it's the Victoria Cup at Ascot, seven furlong, decent field size handicap. Um, I think we'll, we'll have to see what the ground's doing and what what that what that means. But um, yeah, I think that will be one. Oh, and it's. It's Haydock, I think. It's um, Swinton Hurdle. There's a so there could be there could be a few combos of of, of handicaps at Ascot and Haydock. So we'll have to see what the field sizes do. I think there also is the Ling the Lingfield meeting with like the Oaks and Derby trial, but 
no, don't normally get excited about that one from a betting heat nor a spectacle point of view. Uh, and they've moved it on your weather, I think, as well. But yeah, so I think Ascot Haydock is probably where we're going to have a bit of focus on Saturday. All right. Uh, oh, and I should mention, I think Sunday, I think it's Sunday series again. I think it is Hamilton this week as well. Um, so I'm literally just brain dumping. Like the things just keep popping in my head, and I think they might be useful. All right. Thank you very much. I will see you Saturday morning. Enjoy your Friday with whatever you are doing with it. And I will see you the other side. Bye bye.